What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to talk about our date picker and getting that set up so we can select a start date and an end date from one calendar and have that data saved into our trip object and upload it into Firebase. All right, so here's what our app's gonna look like by the end of the video. Similarly, you can create your trip. You know, you can put in any place here. And then you can go ahead and this new screen is gonna have a, a select date button. So you go ahead and add a new date. The date range will automatically default to be today's date and seven days from now, but you can change that to anything. So if I do the eighth through the 10th and hit okay, you'll see down here, this is also updated from the eighth through the 10th. And then if you continue on here, it, that data is still saved. And when you hit submit, it'll be updated up, or sorry, it'll be updated into Firebase. All right, great, let's get started. Right now we just have the dates being set to the current time, the current date. So let's go ahead and add a date picker where we can select a date range for the start and end date. Uh, we're actually gonna use this nice flutter, um, this nice flutter widget that's already out there that can do this start date and end date. Uh, out of the box, flutter doesn't actually, um, the flutter date picker widget does not actually let you select dates. Uh, but it looks like that might be something that's coming in the near future. Uh, but for now, we're going to use this uh, this widget plugin, which I'll link to in the bio. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and import that into our pubspec.yaml file. So go ahead and find that file. And we can just add that right here under the init. Um, then hit packages get there to get that package. And then we just need to import that package into our date view file. So go ahead and add that in. Uh, and we're gonna add that as date range picker. So that's how we can use this, um, this new date range, this date picker. Um, so the, the first thing we're gonna need to do is actually convert our stateful widget into a stateless widget. So to do that, you can actually just hit uh, option enter and it will actually automatically do it for you right in Android Studio. All right, so now in our stateless widget, uh, under the state class, go ahead and create two new variables for the time, which is gonna be, they're both gonna be date time. We're gonna have the start time, or start date rather, and that's just gonna equal a date time. Uh, we'll set that initially to be the date time, for, uh, the current date time, and the end date, Let's go ahead and set that to the current time plus seven days. So go ahead and add a duration of seven days. And with these, let's go ahead, get, go ahead and use them in our uh, builder down here. So when we click the button, let's use start date and end date. All right, and right now, if you check on the app, you should be able to see that our start date and end date are getting plugged in over here. Uh, so that looks good. Now, the reason these are stateless is because, or sorry, the reason these are, the reason this is, needs to be a stateful widget now, because we actually want to display those dates here. Uh, and those, since they're gonna change once you select the dates, we want that option to be available. All right, so the next thing we can do is add a function that we can use to get the date time um, pop-up working. So this is actually gonna be a future function, which actually requires another import, which is the um, asynchronous import. So it's the dart async, like that. Um, and then with that, with this future now, we can create a, a new function, which we're just gonna call display, um, display date range picker. And this will take actually a build context and it will be an async Rinus function. All right, so then in this function, the date range picker actually has a good bit of code already written, so we can go ahead and copy that. Uh, and this is what's in the on pressed, in the on pressed section of that, uh, of their little bit of documentation. So go ahead and paste that in. We're just gonna modify a lot of this. Um, we're still, this is going to basically create 
uh, when the picker, when this date range picker is shown, is going to create, uh, is going to return rather a variable called pick with two, two num or two uh, dates in it, two date times in it, and those are what we're going to use for the start date and end date. Uh, this initial first date, we actually want to just set to our start date, which we defined above. And this last date, we can set to the end date. These are going to be what's actually selected on the calendar when you open the calendar up or when the calendar gets opened up. Uh, this first date and last date are actually the dates that the calendar uh, will show. So this is, you know, this right now, this means the calendar is only going to show from 2015 to th 2020. Um, so instead of that, let's go ahead and do the time down, the time now. And let's go ahead and do 50 years before now. So to go back 50 years from the current date, and then similarly, let's have it go 50 years into the future. Um, all right, that looks good. Then the next thing here is what we do once the date is picked. So this is pretty much what's gonna happen after someone submits the button or picks a date from the date time picker and then submits it. Uh, and this is just checking that they did select a date and that the date has two values, so a start date and an end date. Um, so we can get rid of the print statement here, and what we really want to do is set the start date to equal that picked variable, or that picked list, which is this one right here. Uh, and we want the first element of that, so index zero. And that's gonna be our start date, and then the end date is going to be similarly that picked uh, list at index one. All right, and this is actually all needs to be wrapped in the set state method. So go ahead and add that. And this is just gonna allow uh, basically our, our, in our UI to update our start date and end date once something is picked here. All right, so now let's call this um, date picker. And to do that, we're gonna need, <clears throat> excuse me, to do that, let's create a new button. So a new raised button here. And when it's pressed, we're gonna create the, or we're gonna call that function. So when we call this, we actually need to call it asynchronously. So go ahead and add async here. And call this, and this actually needs to be given that context. In that semicolon there. All right, and actually inside here, this will also take the await prior to being called. Um, so that should be good for the on press. Let's also give this a name, give this button a new name. So we'll call it, uh, you know, select date. All right format that up. All right, now we have the select date button here. And if you push, if you click the button, you can see it's our current date right now and seven days into the future, which is our start and end date. Let's go ahead and print out our dates so we know what we're looking at. Um, right under this entered date, uh, actually, let's just change these text to be, to just say the start date the start date is going to be, you know, it is the start date, which is our start date variable. And similarly, the end date here is our end date variable. All right, those are printing out quite largely. Let's format them to get rid of the time. Uh, so add this new package here, and let's actually put the, this below there. Uh, I'd like to keep all the packages first and then the files below it. Um, so yeah, with that package, now we can go ahead and, and format our date. And to do that, we basically are just going to use date time or date formatter. So, yeah, date formatter. Uh, then we're going to give it the format we want, which is going to be uh, the month, the day, and the year. And then we'll format this this variable here. 
which is our start date. And we actually need to go ahead and make that a string. Just go ahead and do the same thing for the end date, but obviously change the variable to end date. All right, great. So now if you run the app, you'll see printed out the start date and end date. And these are the defaults, which is just a seven day span. Um, so if you go ahead and change it to like the first to the 31st and hit OK, you'll see this is also updated with the first and the 31st. And then if you hit continue on this again, because we already have it set up using our trip object, uh, these are also saved here. And if you hit finish, it will push them up to Firebase. All right, great. So now we have our date picker set up. This all looks great. Um, still, obviously, some style needs to be added, but this is a definitely a valuable start for our date picker. All right, ciao for now.